talk a bit about viewer releases first. Uh, current current viewer releases, Delta FPS uh, and Extra FPS should be getting an RC build pretty soon. Um, there's a few bugs there that are considered showstoppers for either RC or promotion, but we're working on those. Um, as you can guess from the names, the main focus on these releases is performance. We're trying to get the frame rate uh, back up, and so far the, the trends are looking good. We are seeing a pretty good uptick from uh, from the uh, uh, previous frame rates as we've, uh, as we've gotten these things in the pipeline. But uh, we're continuing to push on that. As as extra FPS goes out, uh, I think there will still be some performance work going on, but we will be uh, starting to transition some folks to working on uh, regular features and other things that folks are asking for as well. Uh, let's see, after after extra S, after extra FPS, um, we'll be releasing uh, the build that includes the work that was originally in Mate B. Um, as you can tell from the names, if you know our naming convention, Mate B was kind of skipped over um, as we were switching over to use Gitflow for our uh, for our kind of branching scheme. Um, but we are trying to get it out now. That work has all been pulled into develop and will be uh, going out in some name that starts with B. Uh, after extra FPS. Uh, there's also the work that was in Mate C waiting in the queue. Somewhere in there is the work for supporting the uh, Linux builds of the viewer. I think it's I think that's Mate B, so we should be starting to see uh, starting to see Linux builds fairly soon. Um, let's see. Other than that, uh, Let's see, we should talk about the state of WebRTC. Uh, I don't know if Roxy or Kyle want to take that one. I can I can jump in. Um, WebRTC is not going to roll out to an RC channel next week, but probably the, uh, the an RC channel uh, the week after that because um, we had some tweaks we wanted to make. Um, and so then we're looking at rolling out to our, our, all RCs the week after that, and then SLS the week after that. So it is pending. It is it is at the door. Um, and it's looking pretty good. So uh, I'm open for questions if anybody has any. Uh, I, I know we've talked about this before, Roxy, but do you want to talk a little bit about what the intermediate state is going to look like while we have some regions on WebRTC and, and some not? Okay, yeah, I can go over that. Um, as far as spatial voice, uh, you know, most all the viewers, uh, ours, third-party viewers, have the ability to go both VBox and WebRTC as you hop among, uh, around regions. Um, it's region wide, uh, the uh, VBox or WebRTC, um, but uh, we're good there. Um, there's going to be a little bit of awkwardness um, as far as peer to peer conference and group chat um, between WebRTC and VBox regions, depending on which ones you're on. Um, that'll be in place while we're doing the transition. Um, basically, if you make a call um, to somebody on a VBox region from a WebRTC region, uh, the call won't go through, obviously, because they will be on VBox. Um, oh, yeah. Um, and there's a few other things like that, but that, uh, yeah, we just decided it would be longer to do the work to, to ease that transition than we would be uh, doing during the rollout. So uh, 
we just decided to suffer the pain for a little bit. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's kind of what we're going to have. I see some notes. Uh, the voice visualizer issue is fixed in extra FPS. And there's a few other fixes there. So hopefully those will work their way into your viewers uh, as soon as that's out and ready for you to look at, um, which is pending. Um, yep, the uh, voice dots are behind a, pr a pref now. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Anybody else have any uh, questions? Let's see. Okay, if you go to your preferences, your sound and, and your your audio preferences, there will be a checkbox there to turn them on or off. Um, it was uh, done to get rid of some of the visual clutter and to improve performance as sort of the uh, default um, state. Because um, some people had asked for that. Um, but you can just click the checkbox and get them back, and we can talk about uh, other ways to validate your own voice levels and such. Uh, there are some thoughts with that, and if you have any thoughts on that, go ahead and uh, submit them to uh, feedback. Uh, Roxy, where did, in yeah. preferences, did you say the control was? Yeah, it's, it's in uh, the... Uh, Hold on a second. The sound and media. Uh, about three quarters of the way down, show voice dot above avatars. And that is in extra FPS. Does that also control whether you see the uh, the voice, I don't know what you call it, the sort of voice fan, the visualizer? Yeah, that is correct. Okay. Yeah. And you will see the... Uh, Visualizers, um, the dots in the uh, in the fan in the conversations pane. So if you are having a conversation, that's probably a good good place to look for who's talking. Uh, muting and unmuting does work in extra FPS. Yeah, that change, that change was uh, due to a pair of uh, races. Let's see, anything else here? I don't see anything. All right. Uh, I don't know about other topics. Uh, Ryder, do you want to say anything about state of uh, server development? Um, well, let's see. Uh, as Roxy said, uh, WebRTC is up next. That should um, that should be out on the. It's on preflight now and should be out on the RC soon. Um, the next one we have. I am going. To, I was going to be cutting today. Uh, we've been calling barbecue, and uh, that's that's. I'll have to. I'll I'll have to. Uh, get a, a whole list of features, but among them, some people might be interested. Um, LL uh, set avatar, uh, set agent rot, which will let, let you turn an agent from a script. So anyway, that's, that's something to look forward to. Sounds good. Uh, let's see. So we have some ongoing graphics work uh, on beyond the performance stuff, although performance is certainly the, the main focus right now. Um, I don't know. Uh, Cosmic, do you want to talk about other things we have going on in the graphics pipeline, so to speak? Uh, I, think, uh, I think performance has been the main thing, at least uh, DP and I, I think uh, Keens and Rai have been working on some visual improvements as well. I believe Rai has been looking t into, uh, oh no, everything is too dark and 
trying to find a better balance there. Um, and um, I think uh, I think uh, there's a new anti-aliasing algorithm that's uh, up in the pipe uh, for uh, that works a bit nicer with uh, PBR called SMAA. I think those are those are the main things that come to mind. Just what folks about have been up to. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, yeah, that's a good point about the uh, about the things too dark. There's also uh, there's also some work related to uh regressions in in behavior of uh things with uh with alpha set um uh particularly with you know older older blind fong stuff where the math changed and it caused the appearance of things to change so um there's also a fix in the works allowing people to correct those kinds of issues uh when they come up i don't think that's an extra extra FPS yet because it depends on server work that is still in progress um, but it is uh, uh, it is uh, coming at some point yeah the alpha gamma yeah I think that's going into develop not into extra FPS the uh, server side of that is in barbecue Oh, okay, good. Uh, yeah, that's the hair issues, Sassy. All right, I think uh, I think that's about it for for uh, announcements. Um, Unless somebody else wants to jump in with something. Uh, other than that, we're basically open for questions. The bool to bool merge would have been nice to have it go through in a more isolated way. Um, so what would that look like? Put it into a, a kind of a separate branch rather than just sort of rolling it into develop? Yeah, I think it came in as a as a, in main A, and then we also integrated main A and that GLTF iteration into the Atlasaurus release. Is that is that what the difficulty is? That one, yeah, I don't remember which one that one came out in. It probably was main A. Yeah, we do kind of have to strike a balance. It's, um, uh, you know, people often, you know, don't like some feature of our existing code base that's, you know, kind of not keeping with the times or looks kind of sloppy or whatever, and we'll be, you know, kind of motivated to change it. But on the other hand, uh, you know, it, it can be disruptive for other, other devs to do large bulk changes. Um, so we do... Uh, you know, we do need to kind of figure out where to strike the balance on that, and it uh, it can be a tough call sometimes. Yeah, I don't. Um, I I think it would be nice to definitely slow down some of the large, uh, overly ambitious changes. <laughs> um, but at the same time, like the contribution rate has definitely been accelerating. Like we've been taking in a lot more PRs. Uh, than we historically have, and I think that's a good thing. But it makes uh, it makes a lot of this uh, a lot more work for this kind of stuff <laughs> with downstream merges. Yeah, um, yeah. So I think uh, like one of the potential solutions we're looking towards uh, is ways for for more of the 
things that have needed to stay downstream uh, to be to be put into shape where they they could be taken upstream. So a lot of that integration work uh, would not have to keep being redone as conflicts uh, down the line. Um, so uh, we should definitely like look for ways to to reduce that merge burden uh, as much as we can. Yeah, I mean the the whole hope of the Git flow process is to to sort of accelerate these things and and do these integrations more frequently in in smaller batches, um, so that like big big conflict laden merges don't pile up. So yeah, if there's conflict, you're still going to get hit by them at some point. It's just that hopefully. Uh... Hopefully they should be smaller and and resolved quickly yeah, while things are fresh in everyone's mind. Smaller. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So there's a question about uh, the let's see voice roll off. Um, Roxy's been discussing that in chat. Uh, is that all? Is that all covered? Yeah, I think the roll off, that's just, uh, it was in a, a by ear tuning um, to handle people who are having meetings and stuff like that. But uh, we can adjust that a little bit if uh, people want to. All right. Uh, Tony asks, can we ever expect the scaly animation tool in upstream? Um, I'm not. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Is is this the um, the, the work that was done in the puppetry project, or are you thinking of something else? Uh, so you're thinking about like the posing tools? Yeah, yeah, I know there's a lot of interest in posing. Our biggest blocker with trying to do posing is that um, from a from a kind of a shared experience perspective, it's not so good if you if you know your poses aren't visible to anyone else. Um, so we'd like to have a solution for that. Uh, Possibly one approach would be to uh, just make a kind of a small single frame animation out of out of the pose and then then play that and so then that would be visible to other people. Um, but uh, it's it's kind of gotten in line behind a bunch of other things, so we haven't haven't looked at it much recently. Um, but yeah, I, I think that is probably something that we will uh, will tackle at some point and. We would uh, we'd also be interested in contributions if anybody else wants to wants to send us code. Sorry if I sound gravelly. I seem to have some kind of a cold. actually asked Ryder if you were all on the different voice because everybody sounded so mellow, but I'm sorry to hear you're sick. Yeah, well, when we have the new voice, it'll cure all diseases, so it'll be good. Um, I'm not sure if it's the right meaning for it, but I've asked in the past about the SL viewer 
having a chat line visible in the UI um, like other viewers do is that possible is that something for this meeting or did you file a uh, feature request on that one yet Sassy? I'm, I'm I happy to stick that I don't think I did because this was pre-canny as far as I remember it's been a really old request but it really is um, yeah Zan um, Zanabar it's it's a real issue with new residents they don't know they're being spoken to and they don't know how to respond back uh, because a chat button that small just becomes nothing on their screen compared to an actual uh, this seems to be somewhere I could type sort of thing so it's more of a helping people adjust when they're new then yeah it's just they they have no idea they're being spoken to and they just stand there and everybody can be IMing them or chatting to them in open and they just have no knowledge and then occasionally one will actually finally respond that they've worked it out and that's just such a hole in the the experience I think I'll I'll do a canny yeah that would, that would be great thanks yeah I remember there's some discussion about this uh, a few months back but I don't yeah you're, you're probably I think it was uh, last year now good. to be honest yeah well, <laughs> All, it all starts to blend together after a while, but yeah, um, it's it's been a bit. Um, so yeah, getting something into the current system would be great. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, I should have asked when we were talking about WebRTC, but um, how is that looking on the uh, TPV side? Does everybody have support pretty much integrated at this point? All right. Sounds like everybody who's commented is in uh, is in good shape.
Yeah, that, that's an interesting point. If we're trying to tune the behavior to support, uh, you know, kind of scattered scattered clusters of people, um, then it's it it could be a, a little bit sensitive to make the uh, fall off, you know, close enough to what they're used to already. All right, well, we're open for other topics. If nobody else has anything, well, we can, I don't know, wander off and have a weekend earlier. No escape for you. Do you would the um, sign up um, to join SL be in the purview of this group meeting? Uh, is, is, sorry, say it again. The sign up for SLB. Like joining Second Life, the no, jo joining Second Life in general. Like when somebody tries to join, if I had a question or like wanted to discuss that, is that this meeting would that be relevant? Oh, uh, yeah, good question. Where's the best place to discuss that? Um, you know, it's not really part of viewer. Um. Probably the web user group. Yeah, yeah. that sounds okay, like that sounds like yep. the way to go. Thanks. Really hoping they will do a combined web user CCUG eventually. Is there, I don't know if you go to both of those, do you see a lot of overlap in the, in the folks so much who attend those meetings? Yeah. So much. Um, yeah, well, I mean, for one thing, content creators <laughs> rely on marketplace. Um, right. But also just, I just feel that sometimes um, a lot of you, specifically Vera and Brad and everybody that go to this CCUG, could really benefit from being at the web user one. Um, they wanted to give us an extra web user one and I, I begged them to tack it on the um, the end of the CCUG so the overlap could be the same people attending but also maybe if you had extra time to stay a little bit longer that could work out in your favour as well. Oh yeah, so, that would be one way to do it, just have it in the yeah. same place sort of consecutively. Yeah, yeah exactly. So you um, don't uh, you don't have to stick around if you only care about one right, aspect exactly, of it. Exactly, exactly. And then the people that don't really realise because web user group, the name of it is just sort of they don't realise that it tackles marketplace so heavily. It seems to tackle marketplace more heavily than anything else, and that's why it really could benefit from CCUG. That's why Garfield comes to the CCUG, I think, because he tries to see what's going on there if it benefits yeah that's an interesting point um we should probably chat with the web folks and see see what they think about that right uh, there's a question about that's... attachments detaching a few seconds after wearing um, I think there are multiple attachment issues. There may be some where they're like, they're still there, but they're not visible. And, um, so I'm not sure if these are actually detached or not. Does anybody know the the current current state of play on those issues? There is there is an attachment issue in. Uh... In Doubtfire, which is the simulator that uh, is rolling out now, uh, where the where the region will lose your attachment on occasionally on a teleport. Um, the uh, that is actually fixed in the Web RTC version.
been a while now. If I go to detach my shoes, for instance, they'll just stay there and I'll, and I'll keep getting the detach option if I keep trying and trying and trying and it can take five, if not more, seconds for anything to detach. Okay, uh, that is new. Um... It's been probably more than six months happening, um, probably well oh. into last year. Does it vary depending really on what region you're in? Me? <laughs> I have a 400 um, plus K inventory. I thought it was just me suffering. That uh, That is not something that I have heard anything about. Uh, and... and not, 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 not to say he works on my machine, but works on my machine. Uh, so, uh, is, is this occurring all the time, or just sometimes? All the time. I'm making you a GIF now to show you how how. Yeah. It just, it just took 14 seconds for my shoes to come off. 400k is a pretty big inventory, but I don't know if that's related. It doesn't make any difference where you are when you're doing this? Not at all. Like what region? Okay. Okay. Um, had you opened a canny for this? No, because I thought I was the only... I thought I was the only one, legit. So, thanks, Christy. <laughs> well, no, I... Uh, you know, uh... If you could please open a canny for us, I mean that that way it won't, you know, if if, if we just talk about it here, then I'm going to write it on a post-it note, and and it will get lost in the huge stack of post-it notes that are that are sticking to every surface in this in my office here. So uh, yeah, please put it on a canny so so it doesn't get lost and we can investigate. Yeah, my login takes nearly four minutes, um, and then oh, I don't know, it's like thirty seconds. <laughs> yeah, the the fact all that the we load all there. of inventory on login uh, does give us some scalability issues uh, with with uh, you know folks with large inventories. Well, I yeah. never have actual problem with it being loaded once I'm in world, which is really funny because friends of mine who have not as high or similar will say, oh, I'm still loading half an hour after they're in world. And I'm like, um, what? Everything I've got is there. <laughs> so I never had those sorts of issues. Just just the login takes me a little longer, which is, is hard if you crash. I I always hear those stories and have to wonder if they're connecting from Australia or bouncing off a satellite in space. <laughs> that used to be the thought that it was me pinging from the other side of the world, but no. But my beta grid inventory is six hundred plus. It's fun over there. I get to play dress up. Yeah, mine, mine's more related to the fact that I've done customer service for dozens of stores and managed many stores and I have full inventories of their products in my inventory and beta testing and yeah, so <laughs> that's and then blogging on top and then I'm a shopaholic, so all of the things. But I have gotten rid of tens of thousands of units because when you did Bento, when you did Bomb, I couldn't get onto the regular viewer at all um, to beta test and uh, used to have to get rid of things. And that's what's the beta grid, the, the other 200,000 I've deleted over the years.
Yeah, it's 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 tough. I think there are definitely things we could do to optimize for larger inventories, but it would be a it would be a fairly big project because there's just a bunch of different pieces of it, right? There's there's actually like sending all the inventory to the to the viewer takes a while, and then we generate UI elements for for everything in inventory, even if it never actually you know is visible in the UI. Um, well, and if you don't do that, then there's a stall when you first open your inventory, generating the UI for it. And yeah, it... yeah, you'd need to you'd need to have. Um, I mean, if if you're doing partial loading, it would have to be smart so that it like could show you the the uh, part of the inventory that uh, you know you care about right away. But you could, yeah, you could get stalls, you know, loading if you didn't have it all immediately. Um, it's, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's something that we could we could work on at some point um it's just you know kind of in queue with everything else be like zipping we we discussed that at one of the meetings too that you could actually just zip folders so that they weren't loading but you need access to them without unboxing but the um but don't touch my inventory cuz you <laughs> did that to Anna Adamant once and lost hundreds and hundreds of thousands of units like you lost them and then compensated her a couple of hundred dollars and i'll kill you <laughs> uh yeah well i don't i don't think it would be that would count as optimizing if we lose your stuff but yeah uh, they, they told her that they had to move it to a different server or something and they lost it and oh she boy. had been a content creator for over a decade and you lost all her files everything and I've heard that have happened a few times, unfortunately. So touch mine, there'll be trouble. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that our UI kind of assumes that you have all the inventory loaded too, because you, you know, we've got this like search filtering and stuff. Um, so if we we're sort of doing selective loading, then you wouldn't necessarily get the expected results when you try to do a search because right. you don't have everything on hand. It would, we'd probably need to have some sort of uh, we probably have to make the search more sort of server based instead of the way it works now. So, yeah, it's a little hairy. I think that was old school. I think that that was like a 10 years ago project that they used to try and move people around and there were oopses. <laughs> uh, remember one of the CCUG meetings? I was saying that we'd missed a bet. The, like with Pokemon Go, you have to pay every time you want to add a little bit of additional capacity to your inventory. We we could have made a killing if we had done that at the beginning. Why do you want to hurt me? <laughs> I'm already well, Lifetime they, Premium well, Plus. They, that just cost me a million dollars. Well, hey, Lifetime Premium Plus probably wouldn't have to pay, you know. We, we could work something out. <laughs> oh, that's one of my perks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I don't think we're going to wind up doing that now, but uh, I just thought it was funny that, I mean, that, that kind of gives you a... Uh, that gives you a control over how complicated people's inventory is likely to get to because nobody could afford to have, you know, actually, I, capacity I, or whatever. I'd never played an MMO or anything like that. And I do remember going into like, um, I think it was Terra or one of those games where you had to increase and pay and increase for bag space. And then you had to create a bag that was bigger than it could hold more. And I was like, I don't have to do this in Second Life. What's happening? I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not fair. It's, it's mean. This is just punishment. <laughs> yeah, I get you. Would have yeah, been good sort of I thing. mean, yeah. You think you think about our our inventory system. If you had to, you tried to manage like four hundred thousand things in Borderlands or whatever. I don't think you'd have a good time. It's not. Uh, it's not designed with big inventories in mind at all. But anyway, we've gone a little off topic. Uh, anything else you want to talk about? Uh, this meeting. Uh, question: What kind of performance updates in general are there left to look forward to? Uh, I'd also ask about native Apple ARM release. Um, we're interested in native Apple ARM. I'm not sure how soon we would get to that, but it's definitely on the list. Um, I've definitely taken some steps on, on the native ARM builds, um, and that's going to probably 
start mattering more next year. I think, I mean, there are a handful of Apple model, uh, uh, Intel model um, uh, Macs that are still in support from Apple, but uh, that's not going to be true much longer. So, uh, Yeah, the percentage of people that are on something else is going to... Yeah. I mean, we, we've been very grateful that Rosetta is so good, but uh, but yeah, that's 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 not going to cut it much longer. See, so yeah, it seems likely we could get some uh, could get some performance benefits from from having native support. Yeah, so I've done a handful of the third-party libraries uh, as universal builds. Uh, so um, if anybody else wants to to contribute uh, to any of those third-party libraries that that. And, and turn them into universal builds. Uh, that would help with this effort. Um, so yeah, pull requests. Uh, I will. I will be happy to review those if, if they come. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I intend to get to it sometime, but uh, but it's not at the top of my list right now. Yeah, and to the question about just in general, what kind of performance updates we c will be seeing. Um, it's hard to say. We're 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 very much uh, kind of looking for targets of opportunity at this point. Um, you know, get the profiler out, see see which places in the code we're spending a lot of our time. You know, change the code so it's faster. Um, uh, I know that uh, Dave isn't here today because he's he's investigating one one possible kind of big chunk of optimizations that uh, if that if that works, I think we'll see some nice results from it. But uh, still. Still in the kind of exploration stage. Yeah, asking about metal, probably not the. The option that we've spent the most time looking into would be switching to Vulkan, and then there's a there's a compatibility library that lets you map uh, Vulkan to Metal um, Molten VK, I think. So uh, that would be that would probably be the the simplest path forward if we're trying to get uh, updated to a more uh, you know modern graphics API, and and if we were we're sticking with Vulcan. I think there's there's some uh, there's some other options out there too that might be worth looking into. Yeah, Brad mentions WGPU. Now the OpenGL uh, transition libs. I don't I don't know that we're interested. Um, they retain the sort of existing architectural limitations of OpenGL, uh, which we would hope to, to move beyond um, to get more performance. Um, but I don't know if Dave were here. This could be a, a much more interesting conversation. Oh, Tony mentions that the Megapa hit, is it the right way to say it, viewer has a native release. Um, that's cool. How big a project was it to get that to work? Okay, well, it's encouraging that uh, somebody's gone through the exercise successfully.
I think we have to switch in a the replacement for SSE, but I don't know how much other complexity would be involved. I actually have a Neon yeah, implementation. Oh. Yeah, I ha uh, in a side branch. I don't know, like, uh, it's that's going to need a lot of testing, but uh, but yeah, there there is uh, a Neon implementation of those uh, Vector 4A and Matrix 4A classes. Question about RLVA. Yeah, the, the RLVA work is all courtesy of Kitty. We have one uh, PR that's currently working its way to develop. If it isn't there already, um, should be should be in there soon, and uh, and uh, more more to come, I believe. It's very exciting stuff. Speaking of library, um, it's. I, I guess it's in the library or it's a quick access to the library, but when are the outfits, uh, so the avatar um, defaults in the avatar button going to be changed to Senra? Because it's kind of ridiculous that they're still the old, old default login um, options. You, you mean the, the, like the outfits life. change your avatar button? Uh, yeah, the ones that go to the vampire and the, the, the funky 70s dude in the flares and the angels and everything, like... Or no, complete have, avatars, that's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still the complete avatars from the original login screen and uh, uh, the original join. There's nothing wrong with them, Brad, but it's 
backwards compatibility oh, I know. when they're I logging in with FINRA. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's that's actually kind of an interesting question. What what it would even look like to to switch to Senra because, I mean, with Senra it, it's all about kind of being able to mix and match your own combination of items. So, I mean, you'd have to decide which particular sort of prefab ones uh, you wanted to include. Um, or, or maybe what you're talking about is actually having real support in the viewer for doing the same kind of same kind of build your avatar that you do when you're setting up a, a new account with Senra. Um, well, Senra creates an outfit in your in your outfits folder. Um, what you choose on login right. goes there. But what happens is they see that avatar button and they start pressing it and then they have no knowledge of how to get back to what they logged in as and then you've lost them in the terms of mesh. Mm. So yeah. they're, they're completely messed up at that point um yeah i mean they should have it, a saved outfit but that doesn't mean that they know how to get back to it correct they have no knowledge but that button is right there and and i think it even um takes up part of the screen when you first log in like i think it's actively hi these are avatars you can pick from i think is still the first option new residents get so you know, they'll suddenly turn into an angel or they'll turn into the guy on the horse, um, which um, freaks people out. And <laughs> it's, they do it right in the landing uh, hub. I'm on a horse, yeah. Yeah, and one one person actually said, um, why do I look like a, a slave owner, which was kind of, oh, what is happening um, in open chat? Um, but, yeah. The um, I think it's it just needs to be not those avatars. Um, uh, if they can come up with new Senra looks, that would be a good idea. Well, yeah, that's a tough one. I mean, if we got rid of the complete avatars or changed them to be, you know, Senra based or whatever, um, you know, still in, anything you do to change your avatar's appearance, um you don't necessarily know how to get back, right? That's just kind of the... There's no guide there. ...of our current design, um, so it doesn't... It's a whole meeting. The joining SL is a whole meeting for me. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And, and you know, I've, I've thought about trying to have, like, some kind of undo, so, like, we remember your past states, and then you could just, like, you know, say undo, and you go back to your previous appearance. Um, but... Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it is, it is you know, inherently uh, just a very complex system. I guess we're just about at time, though. We should probably run off. Um, and anybody who doesn't have more meetings after this can go have a, have a weekend, I guess. But I've got one. All right. Well, thanks for coming by, everybody. A good meeting, and we'll, uh, we'll keep you posted. Thank you, everyone.